Now for something a little different. This is going to be a two-part episode, and that's because I'm actually going to start for the very first time an original painting. Now, when I first started out with uh, learning how to paint about four years ago, I always followed YouTube artists. So I started off with The Art Sherpa. She's excellent. You need to check her out. And then I moved on to people like uh, Art with Junie. I also used to follow Ten Hundred. I still do, actually. Uh, Kipto. There are just so many different types of artists out there, many of whom who are doing wonderful work. And, you know, I recommend that if you are just getting started, you can definitely just go art uh, on YouTube and you will come up with such an array of different types of artists to follow. Anyway, all that aside, I always used to sort of copy off of what they were doing. I would follow the tutorials. I would not create or, or I didn't think that I could imagine uh, my own composition when it came to painting. So I always just sort of followed, you know, like Bob Ross and these guys, and I just tried to reproduce what they painted. And now I think it is time to kind of step out of the box. It has been four years and about three years of which has been art and the word. And I think it's time to create from scratch. So now that takes me to the second part of this episode, and that is talking about branding. When I first began Art of the Word, I did not have a logo in mind because I really didn't know where I was going to go with this. I prayed about it. I asked the Lord to sort of, you know, inspire me with the different episode titles and the different skits and things that we do. But I didn't really know if we were a brand per se. However, last year I branched out a bit and I've actually, I sat down and I wrote out the structure for the program and what it is that I'm trying to do, what it is that I'm trying to achieve, which is to help others to sort of discover their God-given talents and to explore it and to develop it and to have fun with it. So all that to say, I have decided that I'm going to try to create a logo. And of course, when you're thinking of a logo, you're thinking, well, what are the elements that you want to include? So. You want to have a little bit of art, you want to have a little bit of the word, you want to, you know, you want something that sort of represents who you are, what your brand is. And for some reason, as I was sort of reflecting and thinking about it, a hummingbird popped into my head. So I don't know if it's just because I like hummingbirds or if this is something that the Holy Spirit is kind of putting into my mind, but I decided I, I like hummingbirds and I think I'm going to incorporate it into my logo. So I have done a little work of uh, research, trying to figure out what is it about hummingbirds that makes them so special. They're beautiful to look at for sure, but I discovered that there are amazing things about hummingbirds that make them so distinct from other birds. Check it out. Hummingbirds are fascinating little creatures. Did you know there are over 300 species of hummingbirds and they vary in size, color, and habitat? They live in a range of environments from the high Andes mountains to the South American tropical forests. They are adaptable. In some cultures, they symbolize joy, beauty, and love. They are crucial pollinators, transferring pollen from flower to flower as they feed. Hummingbirds are the only birds that can hover in still air for 30 seconds or more. They can fly backwards, sideways, and even upside down due to their unique wing structure and rapid wing beats. And despite their small size, some hummingbird species undertake impressive migrations. For instance, the ruby-throated hummingbird can fly non-stop for up to 500 miles across the Gulf of Mexico during its migration. Hummingbirds display striking iridescent feathers that shimmer and change color depending on the angle of light. Their vibrant plumage often features stunning combinations of greens, reds, blues, and purples. They also have keen eyesight and impressive memories. They remember the location of each flower they have visited and know when the nectar will be replenished. Mind you, I can never remember where I've put down my keys. So this may not be the best bird for me to identify with, but it is a beautiful creature that's just one of the amazing creations God has placed on the earth for us to enjoy. So it's going into my painting today and possibly my new logo. 
So now that we know so much about hummingbirds and you understand why I want to incorporate them into my logo, I started thinking, okay, now that I know that I want to use a hummingbird, where do I go with this idea? So while I am not still not uh, yet ready to create my logo, I've decided to create a work of art that sort of represents my artistic journey. And I have a sketch to show you. I'm a little nervous because this is like an original sketch and it wasn't that great. My husband made me redraw it. Anyway, so I don't know if you can see too much of it, but at the top is our hummingbird. In the center, our eyes and mouth representing myself. This is the only self-portrait I'll ever try and it doesn't look like me, but hey, it's a girl. And at the bottom is a hibiscus or type of flower and that is to sort of represent my Caribbean roots. So I've done it in this sort of rectangular shape. I'm just going to turn it this way so you can see it better. And that is because I'm thinking of doing this as a triptych, meaning that it will be three paintings in the series. And I am starting off with this one. So pray for me. It's very first. It's the very first time that I'm trying a completely original composition here on art and the word. And I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I don't know what colors I'm going to use. It's very much going to be an organically evolving piece of art. And yeah, maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. We'll see. So I've rambled on about me and my project for a bit now, but what's going on with you this week? Are you having a very busy week? Maybe it's a bit challenging and you're thinking, I don't even have time to think. Well, today we're going to think. Today I want us to take some time to reflect on a message that I recently heard by Sue Le Boutelier, hope I'm saying that right, of Calvary Chapel. And it's all about finding out what is God's will for my life and figuring out if I'm using the gifts he gave me in the right way. So let's turn that around a bit. What is God's will for your life? And are you using the gifts he's given you in the right way? According to Sue, there's a general plan for all believers when it comes to God's will. Believers should walk humbly, speak the truth in love, and display the characteristics of God's nature to others by being kind, honest, loving, etc. But what about God's specific will for your life, his particular destiny for you? We need wisdom to determine that by asking the Holy Spirit for discernment. Sue recommends that we do three things. One, Pray to ask God what it is he wants you to do, specifically in your life with your particular gifts and circumstances. Two, read your Bible, pay attention, and listen for prompts within your spirit as the Holy Spirit directs you. And then three, trial and error. Yeah, God may direct, and sometimes we have his assurance we're doing what he's called us to do. And sometimes we try a new thing and have to back out. It may be a good thing, but it's not the right thing, or it's not the right time. So what happens when you do have a clear calling, when you do feel that you know what it is that God wants you to do with your life? Are you devoting time to doing the things he's called you to do? Or are you wasting time in doing other things? Are you spending time developing the gifts he has given you? You see, we don't receive the gifts fully mature. We need time to grow our gifts. And God is growing our gifts in ways that we can't understand. Those hours teaching Sunday school, the time spent doing laundry and cleaning, looking after children, doing the things that are mundane in our perception is God's way of growing our gifts. And we do our part by following his directives in his word and being obedient to his will. So if, like me, you're seeking His will for your life, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you daily and to reveal His plan for you. So this is as far as we're going to go on this particular project today. There will be a part two. We're going to put this down for the rest of 2023 and bring it back in January. I think at that time, um, I'll have a clearer idea as to what colors I'm going to be using and where we're going to go with this. But for now, I feel very excited by what I call the base painting, just the 
underlay of what this is going to be and i look forward to seeing how the holy spirit helps me to grow and develop it so also let me know what do you think about what we spoke about today what are you doing in order to get a clearer direction from god on what it is he wants you to do with your life and your gifts thanks everybody for watching and remember please share like and subscribe take care god bless you oh and be creative for the kingdom